You know, sometimes you have a conversation that starts with you trying to make a charitable donation and ends with you threatening to ejaculate all over somebody's holy book. No, it's just, it's just me. See, some weeks I write the diatribes and some weeks the diatribes just write their own damn selves. And this week is more of the latter type. In fact, if I would thought to record the fucking call, I probably could have called it an interview and gotten a solid 20 minutes of material out of it. So let me see, set the uh, stage for you here. I've actually had a pretty good year this year financially, right? I mean, obviously podcast donations are down given the economic circumstances and we didn't have live show revenue this year, but like I didn't spend any fucking money this year. I haven't taken any trips. I haven't gone out to eat. I haven't gone to the movies or the mall or a game. I've literally left my yard seven times since March. On top of that, Lucinda and I also saved the 4000 bucks a year that we would have otherwise spent being smokers, right? Now, of course, at the same time, I know that a lot of people have had really tough years financially. And when I was a kid, my mom was always involved with these charities that would provide presents for kids in need. So I started looking around my local area, trying to find something along those lines that, you know, wasn't being run by a church. But there's no local Toys for Tots distribution in my town, and there's only one charitable operation of any kind that isn't run by a church. So I pretty much went into that search knowing it was futile. So then I set about a task that turned out to be even more Sisyphean, trying to find a church that I can trust with my fucking donation. Because look, how hard can this be? I just want to give you toys that you then wrap and hand to kids. Boom. End of transaction, right? Uh, of the 13,600 churches in my town of 13,600 people, I figure there has to be one that could manage that without fucking it up and sprinkling indoctrination all over it, right? So I made a couple of calls. And it was like, I was like a goddamn montage that Eli wrote is what it was fucking like. I mean, in the church's defense, the question I'm asking is, hey, is there any way you could give this present to a kid without being all religious about it? And and that's going to be awkward no matter how you sell it. And of course, I'm, I'm using the word atheist without even apologizing for my existence afterwards. So that's not helping matters. In all, I made it through four phone calls before I realized I needed to stop before I got arrested. So on two of the calls, the person I was talking to gave up on me and asked me to call back when a person with better bullshit was going to be there. One hung up on me, but I honestly couldn't tell if she was afraid of the word atheist or didn't know how these fancy phones without buttons worked. But but the fourth guy was such a spectacular asshole that he got his own fucking diatribe. So let me recreate the call for you as best I can. I call and I ask, you know, who should I talk to about the gift drive that they're advertising on their website? And like the other three calls, it just so happened that the person to talk to was whoever answered the fucking phone, right? Because when nobody actually does anything, there's no need to delegate, I guess. Anyway, so I explained my dilemma. I told them I, I, I'd rather give my donation to a secular charity, but I wasn't aware of anyone that served my local community. I told them I wanted to donate toys to kids with no toys, but I, I didn't want my donation used to advance a religious agenda. He did not understand, but that's okay. That's okay. I was expecting that. The people who think having to sell a cake to a gay person is persecution don't excel at seeing things from other people's points of view. So I came armed with an analogy. I said, so imagine like, you know, you're trying to donate food to a Muslim country that has no Christian charities operating. You know, you wouldn't want your money being used to advance their faith, but you still want to be able to feed people, right? It's like that. And I figured that was rock solid. Right. I, I figured that when the stakes are charity for low income families, he wouldn't be intentionally obtuse. But I underestimated his Christianity, I guess. So the crux of his confusion was that Christmas was inherently Christian. So there's no possible way to give toys to kids on Jesus's birthday without promoting Christianity. So I, I explained that many secular Americans as well as Jewish, Muslim, and Hindu Americans exchange gifts on Christmas, so clearly there's some way to do that. And apparently them's fighting words where he comes from. right? He, he started doing that thing that people do when they're, they're in an argument, but you aren't yet, you know, like where they're taking little tiny breaths so you don't have time to interject in between their shit. And, and I'm still trying to salvage the conversation because my goal here is to donate toys to fucking kids. So, so I try to back up a bit. I just offer up my basic question. I'm like, look, man, all I want to know is can parents get toys from your toy drive without being part of your congregation and without being proselytized to? 
And, and then I, I tried to add something along the lines of, and if that's not the case, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I just want to take my donation elsewhere. But I never got that far because he started literally yelling at me that I was dangerously misguided. And if I thought kids needed toys more than they needed the light of Christ's salvation, literally yelling at his phone about this shit. And I'm I'm way out of character right at this point. So I'm I'm just still trying to drag this guy back to civility. I'm like, look, man, I'm going to leave the religious upbringing to the kids' parents. I just want him to have more presence. But this was not the right answer. Apparently, he starts indignantly sermonizing, and th at that point, I just hear potato, potato, potato. So I couldn't tell you what he's fucking talking about. I I, I know I stayed on the line way after I kept telling myself I should hang up. I know at one point he tried to change my religion. At one point, he literally told me that. Atheists don't do charity, forgetting apparently why the fuck I'd called him in the first place. But all of that paled in comparison to my great sin, which was to eventually use the term asshole. Right? I, I didn't even call him an asshole. My literal words were, look, man, I'm not trying to be an asshole here. But when I said asshole, he had to be dragged over to his goddamn fainting couch. So freshly incensed by my wanton vulgarity, he launches into some victorious Jeremiah about how my language confirms every bigoted thing that sprung to his mind when I said atheist in the first place. And he condescendingly offers to send me a Bible to help write my ways. So I tell him, look, man, I got a Bible right next to me and it's probably a lot bigger bigger than your Bible. So he gives me some passage or another to read. And I say, you know what, man, I'll read that just as soon as I can. Some of these pages are stuck together, though. I jerk off on this thing a lot. And that's when he hung up on me. Now, there is a point to all of this beyond me just bitching about some asshole I had to endure on the phone. Because I, I have to admit that, like, for a full day afterwards, I kept returning to that weird vindication that he expressed about the use of the word asshole. So up until then, his tone seemed threatened. And afterwards, it was elated. And, and I know he had to cling to something to tell himself that he'd won the exchange or whatever, but it still seemed baffling the extent to which it changed. But then I put it into full context. Up until then, I was winning at being the good guy. I was doing Christ-like better than he was, or at least how he would define Christ-like. Right? The very fact that there was an atheist trying to do charity fucked up his whole goddamn worldview. And my repeated efforts to defuse the situation and not fight with them were just exacerbating his unease. I kept outdoing him in the being a good human department. The use of naughty words was the first thing I gave him that he could call a flaw under his warped definition of morality. So, in retrospect, as good as it might have felt, the line about splooging on a Bible actually gave him exactly the exculpation he was after. But you know what? I still can't make myself feel bad about it. After all, it's Christmas. I'm in a giving mood. Even knowing what I know now, I would happily offer to jack off on that pastor's Bible again anytime. <laughs>